please turn in your Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 7. What's on my heart to uh, study from God's Word tonight is the word repentance and repenting. And uh, specifically, there is a, a false doctrine that I believe is, is prominent about the word repent and repenting that I would like to, to discuss from God's Word and make sure that we are all grounded in the truth of God's Word and that it would motivate us to truly repent. The, uh, the false doctrine that goes around is that we don't have to repent, this phrase, from our sins or of our sins. And they'll, they'll get you if you're not careful because they'll tell you, you'll say, yes, you do have to repent of your sins. And then they'll say, find the phrase, repent of your sins in the Bible. And that phrase, as they state it, that's not in the Bible. Repent of your sins or repent of sins. That's not in the Bible. But before we go too much further, let me read to you. If you're taking notes, you can, you can take some notes here. This is in the Bible concerning sinners that need repentance. In Luke 15, 7, the Bible says that joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth. Connecting sinners with repenting. It's sinners who need to repent. Again, Jesus said in Luke 5, verse 32, that He came not to call the righteous, but who? Sinners to repentance. And then in Acts chapter 3, verse 19, the Bible states, Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. So the Bible clearly connects repenting with sinners. Sinners need to repent. And all of us have sinned, and we fall short of the glory of God. And it's not a one-time thing. I believe there's a false doctrine that says that if you repent, if you feel bad about your sins... On one day, and you say, God, I'm sorry about all my sins, and then you just go about your life. You don't have to actually change from your sins. But if you felt bad that one day, that that is repenting, and that is not what the Word of God teaches about repenting. Not only does the Bible say that sinners need to repent, but remember the phrase that they'll, they'll say is not biblical is repent of your sins. Let's look at some things that the Bible does say to repent of. In the Bible it says, in Jeremiah chapter 8, it talked about someone who repented him of his wickedness. Repented him of his wickedness. Wickedness is sin. Also the Bible states in the New Testament, in 2 Corinthians, that they did not repented of the uncleanness and fornication and lasciviousness. They had, they had not repented of of the uncleanness and fornication and lasciviousness. So those are three things we ought to repent of. Uncleanness, fornication, lasciviousness, and wickedness. Also the Bible states, Repent therefore of this thy wickedness. So we ought to repent of wickedness. Which is what Jeremiah said in the Old Testament. It also states, Great tribulation will be upon those except they repent of their deeds, their works, and that's evil works, evil deeds, their sins. The Bible states in, when, when in Revelation, at the end of the Bible, at the end of the New Testament, remember that, at the end of the New Testament it talks a lot about repenting of sins. And it talked about a woman in a church who was a fornicator, and she was leading people away of fornication, and it said she that she needed to repent of her fornication. He gave her space to repent of her fornication before his judgment came. So repenting of fornication is mentioned in the last book of the Bible. Also, those that committed sins with this woman, if they, they, they would have great judgment, that's what we just read from, they would have great judgment unless they repented of their deeds. And in Revelation it says, that people repented not of the works of their hands. The evil works of their hands is sin. And they did not repent of those works. There's a lot about not repenting of your works in Revelation. Because the book of Revelation 
talks about judgment right here and now upon nations and individuals who do not repent of their sins. Revelation also mentions that people neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. And all four of those things are sins that we need to repent of. One of the arguments that I, I, I see people make about repenting is that in the Old Testament, or even whenever Jesus was preaching and while he was walking, so from the Gospels, the four Gospels and back, that it was taught that you had to repent of your sins. But whenever Acts came, then the, the message of grace was taught and you no longer had to repent of your sins. So that's why I mentioned very clearly that the book of Revelation mentions us repenting of our sins. Also, 2 Corinthians, Paul himself talked about repenting of our sins. So it is throughout the whole Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, it is taught that we ought to repent of our wickedness, our lasciviousness, fornication, the evil works of our hands, our evil deeds, our sins. It is clearly taught in the Bible that we ought to repent of our sins. Now, repenting is not just feeling sorry about our sins. And that's where I'd like to begin today from the Bible, reading with your eyes, if you will, open with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 7. We'll begin in verse 8. Uh, I need to mention that Paul wrote 1 Corinthians to this church at Corinth. And he wrote a harsh letter of many things that they needed to repent of. They had divisions in the church and they had a man that was committing gross fornication and they were not judging. They were not carrying out godly judgment. They were proud that they did nothing about the, the sin that that man was committing. And Paul harshly wrote to them in 1 Corinthians that they ought to repent of that, that they ought to put away that man that committed the wickedness. And they did. They obeyed God. They actually repented of, which not just felt bad about, but they actually did some actions to change what they had done that Paul criticized them for in the in 1 Corinthians. And they changed. And now Paul is writing to them about how he made them sorry in that first letter. He made them remorseful. Verse 8, 2 Corinthians 7, verse 8. For though I made you sorry with a letter, I do not repent. Though I did repent, for I perceive that the same epistle hath made you sorry though it were but for a season. Verse 9. Now I rejoice, not that ye were made sorry, but that ye sorrowed to repentance. I'll stop there for time's sake. That phrase is what I'm after. Paul told them that I know I made you sorry. I made you feel remorse. I made you feel bad about your sin in 1 Corinthians. I made you sorry. And he's not happy that he made them sorry. If that's all they were, if all they did was feel bad about their sin, Paul would not be happy. He would not be rejoicing. But now he is rejoicing because they were so sorry, they were so remorseful over their sin, that they repented. See, that Paul, Paul does not equate the word sorry and sorrow with it, repentance. Repentance is a step deeper than sorrow. Look at that again. He says, I rejoice. Not that ye were made sorry, but that ye sorrowed to repentance. Repentance is whenever we realize that we have sinned against the Creator who has loved us so much and has forgiven us of our sins and we will be in the eternal heaven because of the work of God, because of His grace and His love for us alone that He gave to us freely, that Jesus came and paid for us with His blood and because of God's love for us, we'll be in the eternal heaven. And whenever we realize God loves us so much and we've sinned against Him, and then we feel so bad about it that we would turn away from it, that it, it's, it's disgusting to us what we had done, and, and we don't want to go anywhere near there again, and we, we turn completely away from that toward God, and we start filling our lives with good works in place of those evil works, that is repentance. Now, I'd like to shift focus a little bit to make sure that we see, as I studied the word repentance in the Bible, I saw a connection with another word. Repentance does mean feeling remorseful, but so remorseful that you turn 
from their sin. And you'll see a pattern all throughout the Old Testament and New Testament that whenever the word repentance or repent is mentioned in the Bible, there's another word connected to it. Does anybody know what that word would be? Turn. So repentance and turning are inseparable in the Bible. You can't repent. You can't truly repent, feel so bad about your sin that you change and turn away from it without turning. And you won't turn from your sin unless you really feel remorseful about it. You can, you can turn from your sin in a sense where other people won't see you sin because you don't want them to think bad about you. But it, you're not really repenting unless you turn from your sin out of sorrow that you have sinned against the God and Father above. Turn with me to Ezekiel chapter 18. Ezekiel chapter 18. Ezekiel chapter 18 verse 30. We'll begin in verse 30. Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, everyone according to his ways. Let me pause there and make sure we all here understand that the Bible teaches that we are not saved eternally. We will not be in the eternal heaven when we die because of our works or by our works or according to our works, but by the grace of God. However, it is clearly taught more often in the Bible about how God does judge us according to our works while we live every day. So the Bible separates. You have to be able to separate eternal salvation and how God saved us eternally, not by our works, not of our works, not of anything we've done, not because we've repented, not because of anything we've done, but by the grace of God we'll be in the eternal heaven when we die. However, we need to understand that most of the Bible, the Bible is a book written to God's people who are saved and who will be in the eternal heaven when they die. So the message of the Bible is, those of you, I want you to know that you are saved not by your works, of your works, or according to your works to eternal heaven. However, because you are a child of God, God will not allow you to live ungodly without major consequences. And He does come to each of us and judges us right now according to our works. And we will either have righteousness and peace and joy in our soul in the Holy Ghost in the kingdom of heaven. Romans 14, 17 tells us that the kingdom of God is righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. We don't get into the eternal heaven because of our works, but whenever we do good works, we can enter the kingdom of God. We can have righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost right now. We have to do good works for that. And God judges us on our works. We can only do those good works because God first saved us and He first loved us and He's given us the ability to do those good works. But now we are required to do good works. And whenever we sin against God, we ought to feel so sorry, so much remorse that we'd fall to our knees and beg God to forgive us and that we would turn 100% away from those evil works. And the beauty of it is, if we truly repent and turn from those ways, not just say, I'm sorry, but completely turn away from those sins, God will lift us up to feel that peace that passes understanding and that joy in the kingdom of heaven. So the Bible says again in Ezekiel chapter 18, look with me, in Ezekiel chapter 18 verse, verse 30, Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, everyone according to his ways, saith the Lord God. Repent and turn. Repent and turn. You can't do one without the other. Repent and turn. You can't truly repent without turning. Repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions, so iniqui iniquity shall not be your ruin. So we ought to repent and turn from our transgressions. What's another word for transgressions? Sins. You are to repent, and then, because you feel so sorry, you will turn from your sins, from your transgressions. Back up with me a couple of pages. Back up with me to Ezekiel chapter 14. Ezekiel 14 and verse 6. Again, the, what, what I'm trying to, to study with you, what I'm trying to impress in all of our hearts is that we cannot repent without turning. Repentance means to turn away from your sin, to feel so bad about it that you turn completely away from your sin and run in the other direction toward God. Ezekiel chapter 14 verse 6. Therefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, Repent and turn yourselves 
from your idols and turn away your faces from all your abominations. Turn from your idols. Repent from your idols. As we read these things, I hope that God will impress in all of our hearts to examine ourselves and see if we need to repent and turn from any idols that we may have in our lives. Things that get in between our service with God, our love for God, things that are more important to us than our service to God. We need to cut them off. We need to despise them. We need to feel terrible about those idols and tear them down from God's throne. And then turn away from those idols and turn straight toward God. Turn with me to the New Testament. Acts chapter 26. Acts chapter 26. Acts chapter 26, beginning in verse 19. Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision, but showed first unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coast of Judea and then to the Gentiles that they should, listen carefully, this is what Paul said, preached, they should repent and turn to God and do works, meet for repentance. Repent and turn toward God. Repent and turn to God. And do works meet for repentance? Whenever we truly repent, other believers in Christ, others who are following Jesus, will see it clearly. We won't have to say anything. We won't have to tell them, I'm so sorry. We don't, even, we don't have to speak the words, I'm sorry, to show that we're repentant. We need to speak those words, but not in order to show we're repentant. People will be able to see that you are repentant of your sins if you're truly repenting of your sins. If we are truly repenting of our sins, it will, it will show forth in our works. We will do works, good works, that are meet for repentance. People will see it clearly. Another way that John the Baptist said it is that we would need to bring forth fruit, meet for repentance. And bring forth fruit, bring forth fruit worthy of repentance. We need to do works worthy of repentance. Do works meet for repentance. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12 speaks about the Old Testament, the town of Nineveh. And I compared, I read here in Matthew 12 what, what was described about what actions Nineveh took whenever God spared them from the wrath to come. See, that wasn't talking about, in Nineveh, they weren't going to the judgment wasn't that they were going to all die and go to hell. The judgment was that they would be turned into hell, that God was going to destroy the nation if they didn't repent. They needed to turn from their wickedness. Look at Matthew chapter 12, verse 41. Jesus is speaking, and he says, The men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it, because they, those men in Nineveh, they repented at the preaching of Jonas. And behold, a greater than Jonas is here. Jesus is greater than Jonah. And at this time in, in, this, in the nation of Israel, in, in the city of Jerusalem, Jesus was doing the same thing that Jonah was to Nineveh. Jesus was teaching these Jews that they were about to be destroyed. That judgment was coming then. And that if they didn't repent... See, the message of the New Testament, of all the preachers in the New Testament, was to the Jews first, and also the Gentiles, that the Jews should repent for the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That kingdom of God that we mentioned, the righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost, it was about to be fully established, and the Holy Spirit would come down in Pentecost, and people would be able to feel the power of God, and they would be able to feel God with them, and the peace and that passes understanding. But, before that, God was going to tear down the nation of Israel. He was going to destroy Jerusalem. So Jesus was preaching to these, these people and they would say, what he's really saying here is, you have someone better than Jonah warning you about the nation of, of Israel, that the city of Jerusalem being destroyed, and warning you to turn from your wickedness. And you refuse to repent. Whenever those back in Nineveh, they repented at the sound of, of Jonah's preaching. Now, the phrase here was repent. I want to quickly turn with me to the Old Testament. Let's see. Look, turn to the book of Jonah, chapter 3. Let's see how the book of Jonah describes what they did whenever they repented. Those actions that they took 
whenever they repented. Turn with me to Jonah chapter 3. Look at verses 5 through 8. Chapter 3, verse 5. So the people of Nineveh, this is the, the description of what the people of Nineveh did to repent. The New Testament said they repented at the sound of Jonah. Here's what they did. Chapter 3, verse 5. So the people of Nineveh believed God. That's the first thing they did. They believed that God would judge His people while they live. And proclaimed a fast. They fasted. And they put on sackcloth. From the greatest of them, the king, even to the least of them, the lowest in the, in the city. For the word came unto the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, and he laid his robe from him, and covered him with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. He was genuinely remorseful. He was sorry at this point. He was filled with sorrow. And he caused it to be proclaimed, the king caused it to be proclaimed, and published through Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Let them not feed nor drink water. He proclaimed a fast. Verse 8. But let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily unto God. Yea, let them turn every one from his evil way and from the violence that is in their hands. So the king proclaimed that they ought to pray, fast, and Turn away from their sin. That's true repentance. Verse 9. Who can tell if God will turn and repent? That, the word repent in the Bible, God, would, whenever He repents, it's not that He's turning away from His sin. God would remove the judgment from them. The judgment that they are owed, God would have mercy and remove it. But they repented by turning from their wicked ways. Who can tell if God will turn and repent and turn away from His fierce anger? that we perish not. And God saw their works, that they turned from their evil way, and God repented of the evil, that He had said that He would do unto them, and He did it not. Turn with me in closing to Matthew chapter 21. Matthew chapter 21. Again, what's on my heart is that we would not be deceived by the devil. See, the devil is doing his best to spread a false doctrine that we can live however we want to. As if we're a child of God, we can live however we want to and there's no consequences. And that's just not the Word of God. It is true, amazingly, by the grace of God that we will be in the eternal heaven when we die because of the grace of God. Not of our works, not by our works, not according to our works, not because we've repented, not because of anything that we have done. But, it's also true that whom the Lord loves, He chastens. And we will miss out on righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost, in the kingdom of heaven, right here and now, if we do not repent of our sins. And not only that, but we will be cast into a hell on earth. We will be cast into God's wrath and judgment, just like He destroyed the whole world because of their wickedness that had abounded in the world and they didn't repent at the sound of, of Noah. They laughed at Noah and told Noah, this hasn't rained ever. And so they laughed at him. They didn't repent. They didn't feel bad, but they also didn't turn from their sin and they were wiped out by the flood. Sodom and Gomorrah, they did not repent. And many, even in Lot's house, did not repent whenever the two angels came to, to preach to them. They didn't hear the preaching. They didn't take it to heart. They didn't, they didn't turn from their sin. And they stayed put. And they were wiped out right then. God's judgment happens here to God's people. And it can be terrible. We, our nation, the Bible talks about a nation that won't turn from their wickedness, turn from their sin, repent from their sin, can be turned into hell. Right now, we can, we can have a hell on earth, judgment from God, if we don't turn from our sin. Or we can turn from our sin and have righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's what's on my heart. Don't be deceived into thinking that all you have to do is say a prayer and everything will be great for the rest of your life. We need to serve the Lord to be in that peace and that joy, to walk with Jesus every day and to, to escape the wrath that God's people can feel whenever they sin. Matthew chapter 21, there's a parable that Jesus teaches, beginning in verse 28. But what think ye? A certain man had two sons, and he came to the first, and he said, Son, go work today in my vineyard. 
He answered and said, I will not. But afterward, he repented and went. And he came to the second son and said, Likewise. And he answered and said, I go, sir. And he went not. Whether of them twain did the will of his father. So here's, here's the parable Jesus presents. A man had two sons, and he told both of his sons, go work in the vineyard. One of the sons said, I'm not going to do that. But then he turned and went and did what he was told to do, even though he had said he would not do it. The other one said, yes, sir, I'll go right away to the vineyard. And he never went to the vineyard. Which one of them did the will of the Father? To, to enter the kingdom of heaven, the Bible says in Matthew 7, 21, not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. So Jesus is saying, which one of these people will enter the kingdom? Which one of these did the will of their Father? And of course, it's the Son that originally said he would not go work, he would not obey. But he turned and did the works. He actually turned and did good works. He, he did works meet for repentance and went and worked in the vineyard. Repentance is more than just feeling sorry. 